So a couple of weeks ago, Marjorie Taylor Greene called an openly gay lawmaker a groomer. And this is after he said that groomer is being used as a slur against LGBTQ plus people. So you really get a sense of like why she did this. She just wanted to call him a slur, but she was using a synonym in lieu of a slur. But anyways, he wrote... The word groomer is categorically an anti-LGBTQ hate word. It's super homophobic and transphobic. It plays into the slander that LGBTQ people are pedophiles. It's no different than calling someone the F slur. If you call someone groomer, you're inciting violence against LGBTQ people. Now, this right here, you might think, mm, maybe he's being a little bit hyperbolic. Wait, but he's correct, though, about this being a slur. Um... I've seen people respond on Twitter and in my YouTube comments when I talk about LGBTQ plus issues calling me a groomer. I just take that as they're too afraid to call me the F slur. So she responded to what he originally said, saying, pass my Protect Children's Innocence Act to stop communist groomers like this from using state government power to take children away from their parents to allow a for-profit medical industry to chop off these confused children's genitals before they're even old enough to vote. So she's basically just calling him the F slur here. That's what she's doing here. And she's also lying. Whose genitals are being chopped off? That doesn't happen. Bottom surgery does not happen on minors ever. It's hard enough for trans adults to be able to afford bottom surgery. But if she wants to talk about a for-profit healthcare system, okay, join us in supporting Medicare for all. She won't do that because that's socialism and socialism bad. Anyway, she's a liar and she's calling him a slur here effectively. So he responded by saying, per Marjorie Green, I'm a communist groomer, pretty deft blending of McCarthy red baiting and gay baiting. For the record, her Protect Children's Innocence Act comes pretty damn close to banning trans people from existing. Oh, and Kevin McCarthy is going to re-empower her. Yeah, so... Getting back to what he says here, when you call someone a groomer, you're inciting violence against LGBTQ plus people. This is correct here, um, and it's not hyperbole, because groomer, even though it's being used as a slur against queer people, it still has a meaning, and even though it's been bastardized by the right, groomer means abuse. Groomer means that you are grooming a child to sexually manipulate and exploit them and molest them ultimately. So when you call someone a groomer, you're effectively smearing them as a pedophile. It's slanderous, right? So, of course, people are going to react to that by saying, oh, well, groomer, well, this person is a danger to children. Of course, we should do something about that. It is effectively an incitement of violence. Now, to give you an example of that, well... Gay lawmaker receives chilling bomb threat accusing him of grooming kids. Police searched the home of California State Senator Scott Weiner, an advocate for LGBTQ uh, rights, after the threat. See what I mean? This is what we mean when we say groomer is a slur and it's an incitement of violence. Because after Marjorie Greene called him a communist groomer, he got a bomb threat because somebody thought he was grooming children. But there's no evidence of that. This is not a pedophile. She's just calling him that because she wants to be an asshole. She wants to call him a slur without saying it while still having plausible deniability. So uh, the California home state of uh, Senator Scott Weiner was searched by police on Tuesday after he was targeted with a bomb threat parroting false right wing groomer rhetoric over his fight for LGBTQ rights. You OK, bud? The threat was emailed to the San Francisco Standard and reported to the San Francisco Police Department, which began searching Wiener's home at around 6 a.m. Police found no explosive at the property. So it's kind of like the Boston Children's Hospital situation where a bomb threat was called in, but thankfully there was no real bomb threat. The subject line read, Scott Wiener will die today, according to the standard. The author, who used the name Zamina Tataro, called Wiener a pedophile and accused him of grooming children. The name Zamina Tataro was also used in a different bomb threat last month against a school in Ontario over the attire of a trans teacher. So when Marjorie Taylor Greene calls someone a groomer, it's in the context of this environment where people in the LGBTQ plus community are being accused of being groomers. They're not just going to like laugh it off. They're going to take action. And that's what happened here. Uh, last week, Kirk tweeted that Wiener supported mutilating children because he sponsored a bill that provides a refuge for trans kids and their families should they flee a state that criminalizes parents for allowing their child to access gender affirming care. And 
This isn't the first time he got a bomb threat. This morning, I was informed of the second bomb threat targeting me this year, plus numerous other death threats mostly related to our work for LGBTQ equality. Marjorie Taylor Greene, Charlie Kirk, and others in the MAGA conspiracy theory ecosystem are inciting violence. This is my full statement. So we're not going to get into that. But this is what is happening. Marjorie Taylor Greene is a lawmaker, and she's effectively calling gay men in the open slurs. It's just absolutely monstrous. People aren't just going to laugh when you call someone a groomer. They're going to take action because they believe that these folks are actually grooming kids. So um, I want to also share this here, courtesy of LGBTQ Nation. Gay congressional staffer speaks out after being attacked by Marjorie Taylor Greene and her followers. So this is another person who Marjorie Taylor Greene targeted that was hit with threats. So Tim Heisen says he has been inundated with anti-LGBTQ plus threats and slurs. Now, the reason here is absolutely ridiculous. So the gay congressional staffer who is facing an ethics committee investigation for, quote, vandalizing an anti-transgender sign posted by Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene is finally speaking out about the controversial congresswoman's crusade against him. Now, just to give you all some more context here with the vandalization of this sign, so Marjorie Taylor Greene, her office is across from Marie Newman's. Uh, Marie Newman is a congresswoman who has a transgender daughter. So Marie Newman, she put up a flag and Marjorie's response to Marie Newman's support for trans rights was to put up this disgusting sign that's basically saying that like trans people uh, are illegitimate. That's not what it said, but I'm just kind of paraphrasing. It was an anti-trans message. So this dude got accused of vandali vandalizing the sign and is being investigated by a congressional ethics committee for vandalization. Um, in an interview with the Washington Blade, Tim Heisen, who has worked behind the scenes on Capitol Hill for over two decades, spoke publicly for the first time about the situation, which began in February of 2021, when Green posted an anti-trans sign in the hallway outside her former office in the Longworth House office building. Green, who vehemently opposes LGBTQ plus rights, posted the sign on a wall facing the office of Representative Marie Newman, a sponsor of the Equality Act, whose daughter is transgender. Okay. I didn't have to give you the additional context because the article did it for me. I should have anticipated that. But either way, now you know. Uh, had posted a trans flag outside her own office. Shortly after that, Green posted her sign that read, There are two genders, male and female. Trust the science. Okay. So, yes, Green responded to the trans flag by being a bigot. She was being openly antagonistic. And after this dude vandalized that sign in response to her antagonism, now he's under investigation for vandalism. It's a fucking joke. Anyways, Heisen was later identified by Capitol Police as the staffer who repeatedly placed stickers featuring Bible verses on Green's sign. Nobody that knows me would consider me a rabble rouser, Heisen explained. Walking by those hateful signs every day uh, just finally got to me. I couldn't let it go unanswered. And I don't blame him. That's a hostile work environment. When you see these signs that are attacking your community... That's not a great way to start work. So for him to place stickers on it and for them to be Bible verses, is that vandalism? Technically, sure, I guess so. But it's vandalism in response to her antagonistic message, her response, her bigoted response to a pro-trans message. It, it's just, she's such a disgusting person. But here's where it gets even more insane. In June of 2022, Green took to the House floor to rail against the mistreatment she claimed she received as a freshman member of Congress and the, quote, crimes she says were committed against her. She named Heisum in her speech and stood next to a poster displaying his name and photo. Quote, I felt very unsafe, Green said at the time. I felt like my life was in danger. So let's pause for a moment. Reverse, just so we know, just so we know how ridiculous this is. So in response to her colleague posting a transgender flag to support her daughter, Marjorie Taylor Greene takes it upon herself to antagonize her, co her co-worker and put up that anti-trans sign. Somebody then vandalizes it. And after she was being an antagonist, she plays the victim and claims that she felt unsafe because this person dared to put some stickers on her stupid sign. That's the situation here. So, Green says she demanded surveillance cameras be installed to monitor her sign because someone stuck a sticker of Jesus on it saying, I never knew you, MTG. So, let's let's watch what she has to say here because here she is putting Heisem on blast 
when all he did was put a sticker on her sign. Give me a break. But yet she felt unsafe here. Maybe even saying uh, a sticker of a picture of Jesus that said, I never knew you, MTG. That was on the previous one. That made her feel unsafe. So that my sticker. staff and I, we had been communicating with the house sergeant in arms multiple times, but we were never getting a response. And I had requested cameras multiple times, but not getting any cameras. Until finally, the house sergeant in arms came to my office and I talked to them out in the hallway and was very loud in the hallway about my need for surveillance cameras because I have nothing to hide. I'm perfectly fine with all the cameras in this building, all the cameras in Longworth where my office is. I have, myself and my staff have nothing to hide. But clearly, there's other people that do. So I was demanding surveillance cameras because this entire time, this had been going on at this point, it had been over a year. And the person that was continually attacking this sign is also attacking me and is angry at me. I did not know if this was a person that I got in the elevator with alone. I did not know if this person was someone that I may be on an escalator with, passing in the hallway, passing on the stairwell. I didn't know if this is a person that maybe personally knew me or someone I had never talked to in my life. But what I did know is the attacks kept coming. They would not stop. There was someone that worked in the building and they clearly hated me. Okay, let me just pause right there. I just have to recap because this is how ridiculous the situation is that we have to keep restating it just so <laughs> we're clear. In response to her, attacking her co-worker she plays the victim when she gets a little bit of a taste of her own medicine and this person was not doing anything to suggest that he was going to be violent he was just putting stickers on her dumb sign that was transphobic and what does she do she cries victim and puts that person on blast and i felt i felt very unsafe i felt my life was in danger especially with the amount of death threats that I receive against myself and my family and the complete refusal by, for, from the sergeant in arms leadership to provide me with any kind of security or protection. I felt like my life was in danger because somebody put stickers on my transphobic sign that I put there to deliberately antagonize my coworker with a trans daughter. I mean, this is the oppressor claiming that they're oppressed. It's truly ridiculous. She said the Department of Justice had refused to prosecute Heisem. I wonder why, because he did nothing wrong. In July, she announced that she had filed a complaint with the House Ethics Committee against Heisem. Following Green's June, June speech on the House floor, she repeatedly tweeted about Heisem, calling him out by name and accusing him of stalking insurrection so so if you put a sticker on a transphobic sign that's insurrection and hate crimes against my faith and gender she is ridiculous heisem's personal and professional email and social media inboxes were subsequently inundated with threats and harassment and he received a threatening letter at his home address according to the blade many of the messages contained anti-lgbtq plus slurs so she repeatedly stokes hate against gay people they get death threats and she still has the audacity to play the victim and claim i'm the one who's being targeted i felt unsafe i'm really the victim it's unbelievable she's a cartoonishly evil person and it's so sad that she keeps getting elected to congress heisem who at the time was chief of staff for representative jake auchincloss and now serves as Deputy Chief of Staff for retiring uh, Representative Alan Lowenthal, is facing a House Ethics Committee investigation. Members of the committee are reportedly deadlocked, with Republicans against, uh, with Republicans unlikely to cross Green and Democrats unlikely to aid her. According to The Blade, the matter could die at the end of the 117th Congress, and it should, because he did nothing wrong. So... This is what Marjorie Taylor Greene does. She incites hatred against LGBTQ plus people, constantly vilifies them. And then when she gets pushback, she uh, she plays victim. And here she is putting him on blast because he dared to push back against her hateful rhetoric. Make 
is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.